Welcome to ABC Tutorial. Today we are going to talk about the forgetting call. Between 1880 to 1885, a German psychologist known as Hermann Hebbingus wanted to understand more about why we forget things and how to prevent forgetting learned information. His research produced what is known as the forgetting curve, which is a visual representation of the way that learned information fades over time. The forgetting curve revealed an exponential decrease in retained information over time. Hebbingus experimented with his own ability to remember using a list of nonsense syllables, which he attempted to recall after some period of time. Even though Hebbingus' research dates back to the 1880s, it is still widely used and highly regarded today. His experiences and results revealed a number of key aspects of the human memory, which include that memory is weakened over time. If we learn new information but then make no attempt to relearn or review that information, we remember less and less of the information as time goes by. That is, it is perfectly normal to retain less and less of any newly learned information with time. Secondly, the biggest drop in retention happens soon after learning. This is reflected by the steep fall at the start of the forgetting curve. Without reviewing or reinforcing our learning, our ability to retain the information drops very quickly after learning. For example, you may leave a class with your head full of newly learned information only to find out that you can remember very little of it just a few hours later. So, it is easier to remember information that have meanings unlike abstract ones. Things with little or no meanings conform most closely to the forgetting curve. For instance, if you are listening to a talk on a subject that you don't understand much or that you have little interest in, you will likely forget it faster than if the talk was on a subject that you find really engaging or exciting. Fourth, the way information is presented affects learning. The same set of information can be retained for a longer duration of time, depending on how well it is communicated. You likely find it easier to remember something that has been organized logically and presented clearly. This is an important aspect of good teaching. Good presentation and good teaching enhance the ability to store the information for a longer period of time. Fifth, mood affects how well you remember information. Helping girls believe that physiological factors such as stress and sleep play a significant role in how well we retain information. There is a strong evidence to suggest that sleep can help our brains to sort and store information. However, we must know that our brain is good at storing information that help us to avoid physiological or psychological harm. The human brain is particularly good at remembering the things that we need to know for our survival. For example, foods we should avoid and the people who are important to our lives. Even though the brain is good at storing information needed for survival, all other information not seen as contributing to our survival by the brain is gradually lost over time by following the Ebbinghaus curve. However, the result of Ebbinghaus research highlighted several things that we can do to retain information for a longer period of time by interfering with the forgetting curve. First is the use of spaced learning. The most important discovery Ebbinghaus made was that by reviewing new information at key moments on the forgetting curve, you can reduce the rate at which you forget that particular information. This approach is often referred to as spaced learning or distributive practice. This refers to a review session that occurs soon after the original learning. This review should happen when recall has slipped significantly, but hasn't fallen so low that you're essentially starting the learning over again. The gap between your review sessions can be longer as time goes by. For example, you might refresh your learning from a lecture the following morning, then afterwards two days later, then afterwards a week later, then 30 days later. By doing this, you will discover that the information will be retained for a very long period of time, sometimes up to years. Reviewing information like this at strategic point after you originally learn it will stretch your recall and stretching the memories encoded in your brain. You will discover any gaps that you need to focus on and relearn if necessary. The second strategy is overlearning, that is, putting in more than the usual amount of effort when you learn something for the first time. Helping girls found that doing this improved retention and slowed the rate of forgetting. He also pointed out that by using certain memory strategies, we can improve our chances of retaining even hard to learn information. Third, making information meaningful and easy to learn. The materials to learn should be clear, relevant, and purposeful in order to establish a strong possibility for retaining that information. Learning from the best teachers, watching the correct tutorial videos, visiting good seminars, using mnemonics and other memory aids where necessary will improve the rate of retaining information. 
Reducing distractions and other demands, also known as cognitive load, should also help in retaining information for a longer period of time. Lastly, challenging the memory. If one comes to review some information and discover gaps in one's memory, this is the most productive time for stretching our recall. Learning that is done at this particular point will be stronger because of the mental challenge that is involved. In summary, helping us discover that newly learned information are forgotten over time by following the forgetting call. He also discovered that the ways of learning by using memory aids can help in retaining new information and that space learning or distributive practice can help to reinforce memories better.